Hello fellow YouTubers and welcome to another of my videos. In this video I'm going to be doing a comparison and benchmarks for the GTX 560 Ti, GTX 560 Ti in SLI mode and GTX 660 Ti. Um, now all the graphics cards are from ASUS. The GTX 660 Ti is slightly overclocked version, factory overclocked version. We're going to use it as it is. Now for the benchmarks, I'm going to use 3 Mark 06, Vantage and 11. All 3D Mark settings are basics because I haven't purchased the 3D Mark suites um, yet anyway. So I'm using whatever is supplied there and I can't change any of these. Uh, Cinebench again is the basic. I can't change anything there. Um, for the Unigine Heaven, the settings are as follows DirectX 11, Tessellation Normal, Shade as High, Anistrophy 4x, Anti Aliasing Off, and Resolution is the system and running full screen. System resolution is 1080p. Um, now, for the games, I'll start with Batman Arkham City. So we have full screen 1080p, V Sync Off. These are going to be everything the same for most games. anti lasing FXA in this case, stereo off, DirectX 11 features are as da 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 da. Everything is basically as per menus here. Um, and that's going to be tested throughout all the graphics cards. Saints Row settings are as follows, which is 1080p, full screen, visiting off, and so on. Spec Ops, the line demo is nearly identical, followed by the Crisis Maximum Edition, which is full game, same as Saints Row, and the settings as you see 1080p on the Ultra. And uh, Dirt Showdown is once again 1080p with the highest settings. And the last game, but not least, is Diablo 3, which is also a demo version, same like Dark Batman and the Spec Ops The Line. And the settings are as follows there. So that's it, guys. That's for the settings. Um, now, I already have the results, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all of them quickly and just explain to you what is happening over there. So just give me one sec. No. So first we're gonna go with Crisis. The top line here represents GTX 560 Ti in SLI mode. The red one represents the GTI 660 Ti and the blue one represents the single GTX 560 Ti and that's gonna be throughout all the benchmarks. So Crisis, as you can see, first thing that pops up there is you have a, a high scaling, very good scaling for GTX 560 Ti and probably the best of all the games. Um, I'm going to talk about them all slowly and you see that, or you can actually see it now that scaling is not great in other games. But anyway, Crisis scaling is good and GTX 560 Ti in SLI mode actually beats the GTX 660 Ti. Um, gameplay experience, however, I prefer GTX 660 Ti somewhat um, due to another thing that I'm going to talk about in Saints Row the third game. Now Diablo 3 made absolutely no difference what graphics card you play with. I got around 99 frames, 98, 99 frames per second on average. So you can say that SLI, um, 560 Ti and SLI single or 660 Ti is going to run exactly the same. So Diablo 3 doesn't take the benefit of the SLI, not the demo version anyway. Saints Row the third, um, that's interesting um, because although the 660 Ti and 560 Ti and SLI is nearly identical in the score and performance. The micro stuttering was unbearable and I could barely get, play the game. So the FPS is great, but um, you can guys uh, have a look on the YouTube and Google. There's plenty of information about what the micro stuttering is and it's really annoying. So not recommended for this particular game and it's a full game. So I don't know, maybe some issues there. 
Spec Ops the line, the scaling is, as I'd say, atrocious because as you see, same as nearly identical to Diablo, um, all the graphics cards, whether SLI or single run, nearly the same. The only good thing I suppose to say is 560 Ti wasn't that much behind the 660 Ti. Now Dirt Showdown is somewhat of a different of the bunch because the SLI mode of 560 Ti run, run actually worse than 560 Ti in single mode. Don't know why, don't ask me, maybe some incompatibility with SLI, uh, whatever it was. Um, that's one of the AMD games by the way, hint hint. And GTX 560 Ti shows a clear lead over here. Um, so different from all other benchmarks, but again, that's just different of all the bunch, just one game like that. Batman Arkham City, again, 560 Ti and SLI and 660 Ti run nearly the same frames. And the 560 Ti single runs slightly lower, so the scaling for the 560 Ti and SLI is not great here. Now, applications. Um, Cinebench is the similar thing as most uh, games. The 560 Ti run only slightly slower than 560 Ti in SLI, and 660 Ti was same basically. Unigine Heaven, um, great scaling there, guys. Once again, the 560 Ti SLI beats the 660 Ti by, by a small margin, and 560 Ti in single just lags behind. Um, pretty nice benchmark, but slightly outdated at this stage. So that's Cineben and Unigine Heaven. Now for applications, we had 3D Marks. Um, interesting there, 06 3D Mark, which is on the bottom there, didn't have any difference basically in SLI or not SLI. So you can see that it's not optimized for SLI mode and all the graphics cards and whether in a SLI or single run nearly exactly same scores. So go figure. 3D Mark Vantage um, improved the SLI scaling there quite a bit. So 560 Ti single lags behind while 560 Ti in SLI beats the 660 Ti graphics card. And 3D Mark 11 shows basically what's happening in the DirectX 11 and who's the boss. So 560 Ti in SLI runs exactly as 660 Ti in single mode and 560 Ti single just basically lags behind. Very nice scaling there guys. Um, power draw, okay let's go to another um, thing there, just give me one sec. Sorry guys, just before I finish wanted to show you this uh, benchmark. Now Drew from Drew Network was wondering how will these cards do in SLI on the Adobe Premiere and similar applications where CUDA is supported. So unfortunately guys, not too well. The situation there is as follows. The single GTX 560 Ti can do nearly as much work and nearly as fast as GTX 660 Ti. You have here 660, the lower the better in this scenario, differently than from the games. So as you see, the difference is not that much, no, sorry, it's a two different, uh, the difference is not that much between the 560 Ti and, and 660 Ti, so why spend all that money, right? Now, if you go for the SLI with 560 Ti, in some games, the scaling is okay, not great, but okay. But in this application, it doesn't matter at all because the Adobe only uses one graphics card, SLI doesn't matter. So guys, for those who want to invest into SLI option for Adobe Suite, let's say, completely useless. Just go with a 560 Ti. Don't even bother, I'd say, with 660 Ti because you're going to spend twice as much money and going to get no difference in performance at all. Right, so that's for that. So basically there were two tests, MPEG-2 and H.264 tests. Um, that's just pre-rendering tests. Encoding is similar. It's much faster with the graphics card than on CPU alone. Power draw. That's another thing. Um, right, so 560 Ti runs nearly um, on the same power as 660 Ti, actually even less. So the less the better in this scenario. 
where GTX 560 Ti SLR requires over 400 watt power supply for the whole system. Now that's for the whole system, guys. I measured that myself. So that was these were the peak values. Um, so that's about it. That's my raw data of which I was making these charts from. You can stop the video here and have a quick look at that and see what you think. But um, I'm going to do conclusion for you guys there. Basically, okay, number one, 560 Ti is not as slow as you might expect. Um, especially in older games, it's probably nearly as good as 660 Ti. It has more raw power in all the games. With the new games, however, DirectX 11 titles especially, uh, the 660 Ti actually does excel and you can see the difference. Now, don't look at the Dirt Showdown, I think there's something weird with the, the way game is done or whatever it is. But you can see that uh, clearly in applications like 3D Mark 11. So, 560 Ti is all the way to go if, you go if you're going for DirectX 11 games. If you going for old games and you thinking maybe you should go for the SLI or 560 Ti, do not. I do not recommend to go SLI on any graphics card for any reason other than benchmarks or just out of curiosity. The reason being is the amount of heat in the case is phenomenal. doesn't matter even if your one single graphics card doesn't produce too much heat. Two graphics cards is going to be twice as much and it will be noticeable and the noise actually is phenomenal of these two GTX 560 Ti's. I made a small clip for you guys so you can have a look here. As you see that's pretty substantial, at least for me anyway. So I wouldn't go with 560 Ti and and these cards are cooled by proper ASUS system which does work. Um, but in SLI they just complete no-no. So guys if you have a little bit of money to spare and you think maybe you shouldn't upgrade stay with GTX 560 Ti with what you have it's not that bad graphics card um, GTX 660 Ti is the way to go if you're building a new system and you have an extra money to spare however at the moment I got one GTX 560 Ti for half the price of GTX 660 Ti so think about it um, there's a new 660 non-TI version, which is pretty capable graphics card as well. The power draw is obviously a big plus for the 660 Ti because in new and modern games it runs as fast as uh, sorry nearly sorry uh, yeah as fast as GTX 560 Ti and SLI. So Nvidia was right. 660 Ti in modern game, games does run like twice the power of GTX 560 which is SLI I suppose, it doesn't really produce twice the result of two single 560s if you know what I mean, but still quite substantial. Only in games, when you go to applications like this for instance, there's no difference. All the graphics cards, the, five, the NVIDIA 5 series are quite capable of doing these things, so if you're into video encoding, invest into GTX 570 or 580, it's gonna be as fast or could be nearly faster than GTX 680 believe it or not and also 570 and 580 is currently supported by Adobe for their applications so yeah guys that's that's basically it there's not much to say there um, scaling of 560 Ti is very bad um, noise and, and heat output is very bad what else is there? Um, the power draw is huge compared to 660 Ti, 560 Ti. So guys, stay with the 560 Ti, the great graphics cards. Building new system, have more money, go with GTX 660 or 660 Ti. Thinking about going a, a SLI, don't be crazy. My advice is do not. Obviously have a huge case, lots of airflow, too much money and just have nothing to do. That's just my honest opinion to you guys. And uh, Drew, especially for you, if you're thinking about doing some encoding and for video production for the application that uh, runs on CUDA, like for instance Adobe Premiere Pro, do not go for the newer graphics cards. They're more expensive, perform the same, um, a little bit lower on power, but then again, 
for instance your 560 ti that could be had for let's say 170 dollars um, would run the same as gtx 560 ti that you can buy for about what 350 dollars and the power draw is going to be nearly identical so same performance same power draw no brainer there half the price so that's it guys um thanks all for watching if you have any questions leave them in the comment section down below if you like the video please click the like button and subscribe and as always have a nice day